Hey everybody, thanks for joining us out here again today for another episode of the VSO Gun Channel. We are at the Tactical Response. We come here a lot, as you guys can tell, but I'm down here taking Fight Strong, yep. and this is our main instructor, or only instructor actually. Well, he uh, yeah, Heather helped. Heather helped out uh, significantly in this class. This was a class designed around making you harder to kill. And for that, I'm gonna defer to Matt uh, he heavily on this video. Sure. Matt Reynolds, everybody. Uh, tell us a little bit about the goals and what we accomplished here and how the course is kind of set up for anybody who's interested in being harder to kill. Sure, thanks for having me, first of all. Uh, yeah, man, so we, we do Fight Strong is a, is a course designed for really anybody who's trying to learn how to get stronger and harder to kill. Uh, we gear it a little more towards the tactical, demographic, martial, lifestyle sort of guys. Uh, and what we've seen out of a lot of these people are, um, you know, they have taken tons of classes, they do tons of training in the martial lifestyle, uh, firearms training, medical training, um, and then when they're really honest with themselves, their own physical body, their own physical prowess is really at a point that is, it's their weak link. And so, um, so we try to teach people how to get the biggest bang for the buck, how to get strong using the basic barbell lifts. Uh, we teach them how to do the squat, the deadlift, the bench press, the press. We go through basic programming, nutrition, injuries, conditioning, uh, mobility, all of those things so that they can put that all together uh, in a weekend package and, and go away and go, okay, I know I'm gonna use this. And so, you know, one of the things we were just talking about out here is uh, for people who have taken classes at Tactical Response before or any of these sorts of classes, you often hope you never have to use the things you learn in these classes, right? So I hope I've never have to actually use my pistol, but I know in Fight Strong, I'm gonna go home and put this stuff into practice tomorrow. 100%, yeah. I know I will. Yeah. So <laughs> well, maybe not tomorrow, because I have to travel tomorrow. Right, but sure. I promise you, Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday's gonna be the day. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's the, that's how the class is really set up. So uh, it's a lot of, of, tons of information, it's probably big information overload, but I try to make it as simple as I can, uh, easy easy to understand. Uh, again, most bang for your buck, biggest return on your investment. Uh, and so that's what we do. And so it's it's a class really, it's not for, you know, you're a big dude, and you're by far the biggest dude in class, uh, but, but the vast majority of people that take the class are absolute novices. Uh, they don't have a lot of experience weightlifting, they don't know what they're doing, and so that's really who the class is designed for. And you know, you can probably speak to uh, people who have a little more experience there you know I hope you got a lot of it out of it too but um, so I, I think people who are from an absolute beginner all the way up to kind of an intermediate advanced sort of lifter there's stuff for everybody I would uh, definitely concur with that uh, so like uh, you know we talked offline uh, significantly about the you know what I've done my journey into fitness sure. and all that sort of stuff so we won't get into that here but like just there is so much that I've had, you know, I've had coaching before, but it has showed me where all of that coaching has fallen short. Sure. And it has pushed that next level. Like, uh, just it, as an anecdotal evidence of this, my deadlift, I put 40 pounds on my deadlift yeah. from like, I mean, how much time do we spend? Like, right, just less, less than an less hour. Than an hour. Yeah. yeah, less than an hour, 40 pounds, and I doubled it. Yep. So. Yeah. I mean. Just because you did it right. Just because I did it right. And yep. I had some time to play with it, and it took the actual manipulations with a dedicated coach is gonna be like, hey, no, that's wrong. You need to fix this, fix that, fix yep. this each time. And you even said when I picked up the, uh, I forget what, what exact weight it was that we were doing, but you're like, wow, you're sandbagging. You need to put it down because we need to add more weight for you because your last ones look like shit and these right. ones look good. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's a lot of that's just with the experience. I've just I've watched tens of thousands of people do this, and so I know what it's supposed to look like. And and often with weightlifting, you know, people have this idea of what it's supposed to feel like, or hey, it feels heavy. And a lot of times I'm looking at bar speed. And so for you, I remember on your deadlift, you know, uh, I'll have people all the time they start to deadlift the weight and they will go, oh, it feels heavy. And I go, well, it may feel heavy because it's the most you've ever picked up, but the bar speed tells me that it in fact is not that heavy. So we're going up. Your form is perfect. Your back is flat. You're not going to hurt yourself. You're making your back stronger let's go up and let's see what you can do so and there's a lot of misconception out there that um, you know you can't do these things because you have an injury or you've had some issues with them in the past and this class also addresses a lot of those things sure. for guys that think that they can't squat anymore think that they can't deadlift or it's bad for you or they can't bench press because they've got an injury yep. I personally have a ganglion cyst right here and we did plenty with the press sure. uh, to address that sort of stuff while I, while I was here so um, you know, there the course definitely addresses all of those concerns. It's very deep. It even goes into programming and nutrition. Yep. 
and all that sort of stuff. So, um, is there any one thing that you'd like to add to, uh, to, to, to this? Yeah, I, I just think the big thing is, I, I think with a lot of people, uh, when people decide to make a decision to make their physical lives better, it often comes from a place that they're not maybe in a great spot emotionally, right? It's just, uh, I owned a gym for years, I, I've, been a, I've been a trainer and a coach for over 20 years, and so I, I recognize the fact that with most people, they wanna do what they're good at. And so, to be able to make a decision and say, Man, this, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone to do something that I have no clue what I'm doing, right? Uh, when people join a gym, here it is, it's January, it's early in the year, people join these gyms, they, they do these things because they're not in a good place, right? They, they um, you know, they got divorced or their, or their girlfriend or boyfriend broke, long, long-term relationship broke up with them or their dad just died of a heart attack or uh, they thought they could always fit into this pair of pants or this dress and they can't fit, like that kind of stuff occurs and so I, I'm used to dealing with people who are a little bit emotionally fragile there, right? And that's, I don't think that's a, a negative thing. Like we all get to those points where we go, man, I. It is scary for me to step out of my comfort zone and do something that I know that I'm not very good at or that I don't know anything about. And so I, I just want to put people's minds at ease. Like this, what we do here is we literally from the very beginning let you take a deep breath, exhale, you are going to be fine. You are going to be great. We've had people, we've had 65 year old women who weighed over 400 pounds take this class who have never done anything in their life and physical in their life and were fine, right? We've had, I had an 11 year old kid take this class. I've had and everything in between. And so this class is for anybody who absolutely just wants to start to change their life on the physical level and say, hey, I, I may have all the experience in the world that I need when it comes to firearm training, um, you know, if shit goes bad, medical training, these sorts of things. But I go deep down inside. I recognize that my own physical world, um, I'm kind of a sedentary individual who has put on too much weight and I'm not sure that I could actually, that I actually am harder to kill. And so for people that are thinking that in the back of their head and go, man, I'm just a little uncomfortable with this. This is the class for you. So it's, it's, uh, we'll make you comfortable. I'm easy going guy, easy to talk to. I try to spend a lot of time with my, with my, um, you know, with the attendees, we go out and eat together. There's lots of times to ask questions and, and not just uh, kind of big picture ethereal things, but very specific to them. Like, here's what I'm going through. Here are my injuries. How can I work around this? Here's what I have access to from an equipment standpoint. Um, what can I do? And I'll really try to put a plan in place for, for each and every attendee that we have. And to be clear, guys, being harder to kill doesn't mean just like gunfighting and knife fighting and sure. fist fighting and all that sort of stuff. It's general life. One of the things that we address is like people getting killed in car accidents. I mean, if you're going 105 miles per hour on the sure. highway and you slam into a berm, you, you're in trouble. You're pretty much in trouble. Yep. But you know, things like 45 mile per hour car accidents, 35, you know, stuff like that. Sure. Some people, I mean, a lot of people are killed in those sort of incidents yeah. every single year. And by and large, stronger people, physically able sure. body people, are heart they, they come back they bounce back from that sure. a lot a lot better than yeah cancer muscle wasting diseases uh, strong people don't get pneumonia and die you know th- things that you watch like the one of the things that, that often kills people is is not the actual original sickness but it's the frailty behind it where they're not able to to keep weight on they're not able to eat it's the lack of like physical endurance you got that so we put those things in place go look I'm not gonna let that like I I can't deal with the fact like I can't change the fact that maybe I'm 65 years old or that I am maybe I've got bad hips or bad knees I can't you often can't change those sorts of things but you can't outwork everybody else and go I'm not gonna use that as an excuse to say I'm gonna let this kill me Right, and so for us, I mean, we always want to be ready. And I think it really creates a situation where it's important. I, I want to be able to walk not just my daughters down the aisle at their wedding, but my grandkids down the aisle. Right? I want to not be strong for my kids. I want to be strong for their kids. Right? I want to be that guy. And so I think a lot of people could. That's a that's will resound with people a lot of times. So, um, man, that's that's what we're trying to create. That's what we mean. When we say harder to kill, not just from a firearm standpoint, but from an entire physical sort of level. Absolutely. Matt Reynolds there, everybody. Thank you very much for coming down here and teaching this class. Awesome. I had an excellent time. By far one of the uh, best classes that I've had here at Tide Response. I'm going to integrate it in my day-to-day life, awesome. which is something that hopefully, like you said, we don't do with the stuff that we learn here at Tide Response. Sure. And, and it is just, it was an amazing experience. I think that everybody who uh, who is involved in a, the martial lifestyle should definitely come and take. Uh, if you guys want to know more about Matt, he teaches lots of other courses as well that are that are discipline specific and broad sure. uh, broad based. Uh, I'll put all that information down in the description description box below his resume and everything, so you guys can can get that. Uh, thanks for joining us down here at Tactical Response. Thanks for watching the VSO Gun Channel, and hopefully we'll see you guys on a future video. Say say bye, Matt.
Thanks for having me. <laughs> so it doesn't take a ton of neural efficiency to deadlift 255. But if you deadlift at 405, more muscle groups will be activated. Does that make sense? Yep. And so when you get to the point that you can deadlift 700 pounds, all of the muscle groups are activated. And so you get to the point where, you know, you guys have heard of the, the fight or flight syndrome, right? And so you hear all these crazy stories that are probably bullshit about men picking up, women picking up cars and shit like that. That's shit. But the, the fight or flight syndrome in regards to physical strength does not occur in highly trained strength athletes. What I mean is, if I had, if somebody put a gun to my kid's head, I, most I've ever deadlifted is 725, I couldn't deadlift much more than 725. Because I've already exhausted that. Because what, what the fiber of flight syndrome is, is it's, it's extreme neural efficiency. It lets all of the muscle fibers fire at the exact same time to make sure you're the most efficient to do the job at, at hand. But if you've already trained that for two decades, you're not going to get that much stronger, right? So maybe I can deadlift a 10-pound PR or a 15-pound PR based purely on adrenaline. But for the most, but most of you guys, if a dog, if somebody had a gun to your kid's head, you would be able to hit a big, a big PR, right? My dad tells the story of a big dog chasing him, and he jumped over like a eight-foot privacy fence when he was a kid. You know, so I'm sure he hit it with his hand, pulled it with his hands or whatever. But that just doesn't apply as much to people who are well trained. You see the video that two-year-old lift that? You know what I'm talking about? The dresser fell in his Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Okay. That's right.